In this video we're going to discuss what happens to the constant pressure heat capacity as we get very very close to absolute zero. So that's what we use the Debye T cubed law for and this law says that the constant pressure heat capacity of a solid, specifically a non-metallic crystal, as a function of temperature will approach the value T cubed as the temperature approaches absolute zero. So this would be a limit that the constant pressure heat capacity of crystals becomes T cubed in the limit that temperature goes to zero. Remember that we can't get exactly to absolute zero usually except for thought experiments but we can get arbitrarily close to it. So one way to say this would be that the limit as T goes to zero of Cp of T of a solid equals zero. Because if we have the temperature approaching T cubed, as T goes to zero, T cubed goes to zero. So, that, so the Debye T cubed law implies that the heat capacity of a solid will go to zero as the temperature goes to zero. So if the heat capacity is zero, this means that any infinitesimally small amount of heat which is added into the system will increase the temperature and the temperature will no longer be at zero. So this is also one reason why it's so difficult to get very, very close to absolute zero is because as you get to absolute zero, the heat capacities of substances get very, very low and it gets very hard for them to not absorb some micro microscopic amount of heat that will push them above absolute zero. Okay, so we said that that was the case for non-metallic crystals or non-metallic solids as T approaches zero. Uh, I'll just mention in passing here what the case is for metallic solids. So the constant pressure heat capacity of a solid as a function of temperature approaches AT plus B T cubed as T approaches zero, where these values A and B are both constants. So it's just determining what the ratio of these two values are. So because you've got a term that depends on T cubed and a term that depends on T, as T goes to zero, T cubed for a very, very small number becomes very, very small faster than T does. So for, for metals, uh, so we'll note that these are for metallic solids. For a metallic solid, the heat capacity will as well go to zero, but because it has a linear term, it'll do so more slowly. And this law starts to produce real consequences on physical systems. When you get to about the range of, say, 15 Kelvin, or below. So when you get to about 15 Kelvin, your heat capacity is going to deviate from whatever it was before and it's going to start approaching zero and it's going to approach it proportionally to the cube of the temperature. So if we graph that, let's have a graph where we see what the heat capacity is as a function of temperature as we're approaching zero there. So let's have C of the solid, constant pressure, <clears throat> temperature going up that way. So it's going to approach T cubed, so it's going to have some, not parabolic, but close to a parabola, some shape like that, where it's going to approach zero as the temperature approaches zero. And then let's remind ourselves that for the entropy, for the value of the entropy as a function of temperature, S of t near absolute zero is going to be the integral from zero to t of the constant pressure heat capacity of t prime divided by t prime integrated with respect to t prime. So if we have C S of p is, a pro is proportional to t cubed, then we're going to have S of t equals integral from zero to t of 
the heat capacity T prime cubed divided by T prime on the numerator there with integrated with respect to T prime. So we're going to have the T prime cubed divided by T prime is going to give us T prime squared T prime squared dt prime. And if you integrate that, you'll get something which is proportional to a value which is proportional to t prime cubed. So it could be one third t prime cubed there if you took that integral to be literal. But you'll see that the entropy, if the heat capacity is proportional to t cubed, that also means that s of t is going to be proportional to t cubed as we're getting to low temperatures there. Okay, so then if we plot our entropy as a function of the temperature there, it's also going to have a cubic dependence as you get to as you get to very, very low temperatures here. Let's say this is 15 Kelvin right there, where this starts to matter. So uh, that's going to be something which is important to take into effect because in order to get the absolute value of entropy we need to know the constant pressure heat capacity at all temperatures up to the current temperature. So this manifests itself at those very low temperatures and is going to be important in integrating under these curves here as we're figuring out the entropy going from zero Kelvin onward.